Hi everyone, how are you? I hope you are doing great. Welcome to Maulana Jad National Urdu University. This is Dr. Khin Agendra from the Department of English. I have come here with another interesting topic, testing and evaluation. Are you ready? Before we talk about testing and evaluation, I would like to talk about uh, what is the need for testing and evaluation. Testing and evaluation is a comprehensive and multidimensional process. It is very essential in the teaching and learning process. It gives us an understanding of the existing learning behavior in order to explain, design and modify the learning experiences. It also gives effectiveness of the instructional material in terms of validity, feasibility and sustainability for the students. In short, it examines the entire teaching learning situation and important factors that contribute to the learning. Finally, it offers recommendations after evaluating the terminal behavior. We always or we often do get confused about uh, certain terms uh, in English language teaching like particularly uh, words like testing, measurement and evaluation like we use them as synonymously without knowing the distinctive uh, meaning or a different meaning how they are different from one another. But today I would like to make them very clear how testing and measurement and evaluation are different from one another. The terms test, measurement and evaluation are often used synonymously but are distinct. <music> test is a tool of measurement designed to elicit a specific sample of an individual behavior. Here I would like to tell you that it's not going to talk about so many persons but it would be focusing on individual behavior. Test is a tool of measurement that quantifies characteristics of an individual. The best example for test is TOEFL, test of English as a foreign language. Study in any other countries like America, Britain, Australia and any other countries. Uh, it is very very important to take TOEFL that is test of English as a foreign language. There are even similar tests like uh, GRE and IELTS, etc. How measurement is different from other words like test and evaluation? Measurement is the process of quantifying the characteristics of persons according to explicit procedures and rules. Quantification involves the assigning of numbers in order to analyze and interpret skills or abilities. For example, when we say a student reads 300 words per minute, we are measuring the reading speed of the student and assigning a numeral 300 to the skill of reading. So this is the best example for measurement. By looking at this example, we can understand what exactly measurement and how measurement is different from other two words they are testing and evaluation. And let us move on to like what are the physical attributes about measurement. And as you all know that by looking at the person we could easily identify by looking at them height and weight. Like they are observed directly but not indirectly. But there are certain things like which we always observe them indirectly. As you can see, aptitude, intelligence, motivation, attitude, fluency in speaking or achievement in reading comprehension. These are all like we don't observe them directly but we would be measuring them indirectly. 
Evaluation is the process of determining the changes in behavior through instruction. And we can also say that evaluation is all about uh, a continuous process. And see, like when you listen to testing and measurement, uh, and this is where we could show the difference between or difference among all these three terms. Like when you talk about test, uh, it's an individual, okay? Like when we talk about measurement, uh, it will be talking about so many persons. Uh, but whereas evaluation, it is going to concentrate uh, on a continuous process. It is not just a very, like a limited uh, certain time, but it would be talking about uh, a continuous process. Evaluation is the collection of reliable and relevant information. I want you to understand these two important terms, uh, reliable and relevant information. Evaluation would always focus on collection of reliable and relevant information. Let us move on to evaluation. Evaluation involves uh, certain procedural steps, specification of objectives of an area to an observable or measurable degree, development and use of variety of tools uh, to get evidence of the level of achievement of each objective and also summarizing and interpreting the outcome of the measurement. Use of these details to improve uh, curriculum, teaching and guidance or to certify. I hope you understand like what is the small difference uh, even though we always use them or we often get confused uh, whether we should use test or evaluation or measurement uh, by listening to all these three different definitions about uh, those particular terms uh, I hope you understood clearly but there are some people and uh, uh, those who are expertise in English language teaching they have given different definitions uh, for evaluation let me talk about one by one according to Vizis he said that evaluation is the systematic gathering of information for the purpose of making decisions. And coming to Ronald Dole, he defines uh, evaluation as a broad and continuous effort to inquire into the effects of utilizing content and process to meet clearly defined goals. Bruce Tuckman, he is also one of the famous persons in English language teaching and also a popular and he said that evaluation is the means of determining whether the program is meeting its goals, that is, whether a given set of instructional inputs match the intended or prescribed outcomes. Let me talk about another great man like who contributed lots of things to English language teaching and who defined evaluation is, his name is Bloom. According to Bloom, evaluation is a system of quality control in which the effectiveness of each step of teaching is determined and alternative procedures if needed or initiated. These are all the few definitions which were given by different people. Like I mean to say that they are all expertise in English language teaching. Evaluation is both quantitative and qualitative process that concerns with the teaching and learning in a given situation. It is not just talks about uh, just only teaching but it concentrates or it focuses both teaching and learning situation. <music> Types of evaluations are one is ongoing or continuous or formative evaluation. I hope you might have heard about uh, formative evaluation but we can also call even formative evaluation as ongoing or continuous evaluation. The second important type of evaluation is terminal or summative evaluation. I mean to say that summative means it is an exam. Let me talk about formative evaluation. Formative evaluation gives a regular feedback at every stage of program. And have a look at the stages like where we usually see that formative evaluation, planning, preparation, production and application. Formative evaluation can be applied to 
any of the teaching and learning process, have a look at this. Designing syllabus, curriculum, methodology, materials, and teaching and learning. The tools used in formative evaluation. There are certain tools which we always use in formative evaluation. They are questionnaires, observation schedules, checklists, self-assessment forms, interviews, diaries, tests, etc. I hope you are all familiar with summative evaluation. All the completion of a program to see the success. We would be looking at this evaluation at the end of the program. And summative evaluation takes into consideration the regular periodic evaluation along with the total evaluation. It is the final judgments of the performance of the students. So here I want you to understand very clear, like it is not like, like what we do in formative evaluation because formative evaluation is all about uh, like it's a regular feedback. But whereas in summative evaluation, you would be looking at at the end of the year or at the end of the semester. There are certain tools which we always use in summative evaluation in order to understand better. Like have a look at this, examinations, tests, term and exams. In tools of evaluation, let me talk about what are the qualities of a good test. The effect of testing on teaching and learning should always be good and beneficial. Otherwise, there is no point that like we talk about the testing. And if the testing is at variance with the objectives of the course, the effect is uh, likely to be harmful. So one should be very careful about uh, the objectives of testing, otherwise uh, our efforts will go into vain. Therefore, a teacher should be very careful while designing a test. Teacher should ensure that the test is free from all the bias. Teacher designs a test like one has to, one has to be very careful like what are the items which we need to include in that particular test. Otherwise, uh, like uh, what I mean to say that you are not supposed to give uh, more importance to one language item, but make sure that you would be giving importance for all the language items so that uh, like that test is going to be valid. What are the features of a good test? Let me explain them in detail. What are the features of a good test? A good test is valid. Valid is not general but specific. For example, if a test of pronunciation measures pronunciation, it is a valid test. Instead, if it measures grammar and vocabulary, it's not a valid test. I hope you understood. I mean to say that if your teacher wants to test you on pronunciation, like the questions have to be on pronunciation, otherwise uh, it is not going to be a valid test. A good test is reliable. Reliability is general rather than specific. Testing the same item, the same results. Here, let me make it very clear. Suppose if I designed a test and if it goes to somebody else and even that has to get the same results, otherwise uh, like uh, we, we don't call it as a reliability or we cannot call it as a, a test is reliable. A good test ensure scoring. Whatever the test which you have uh, and it has to be balanced both simple and difficult and medium so that there is a possibility to score good marks. A good test is that which suits the conditions and overcome all the practical problems. Sometimes there is a possibility to arise some problems but a good test should overcome all the problems. A good test is which is more practical and economical. It measures what we want in reasonable time in given situation. A good test represents the full scope of syllabus and what is specified in objective of learning. A good test meets the needs of all the students at different levels of difficulty and the questions are more precise and clear. So whatever the test which you have, make sure that your test is very precise and clear instead of having very complex and very lengthy and difficulty. Let me explain you 
the types of tests. So before we go into the detailed explanation, what are the types of tests? Look at here, achievement tests, proficiency tests, diagnostic tests, placement tests, aptitude tests. Let me talk about one by one, what achievement test and how it is different from other tests. Achievement tests are directly related to the syllabus, thought or language courses offered. So by looking at this, you could easily understand what exactly achievement tests are. They measure the skills the students have acquired during the course. Achievement tests serve many purposes, the main one being assessing the learner's abilities. Proficiency tests are designed to measure students' general abilities in language which teacher expected to know at a given level. For example, TOEFL, Cambridge examinations, Michigan test of English proficiency. These are all the best examples for proficiency tests. The name itself suggests these tests aim at identifying student strengths and weaknesses. Diagnostic tests used to identify the absence or presence of a specific skill in the student. These tests help us in giving information of the students in teaching program that would suit their abilities. Aptitude tests are constructed to assess proficiency in language use itself. Skills needed to learn a language. Proficiency tests have a relation to feature non-language performance and an aptitude test is concerned with the innate aptitude for language learning. This is what like uh, the small variation which we could find in proficiency tests and aptitude tests. There are different approaches which we can use uh, for testing, direct versus indirect testing. Direct test, write a composition and indirect test, identifying mistakes. Here let me explain you clearly the difference between direct test and indirect test. Direct test means, suppose like when you have a composition, okay, through composition we can have the direct test, but when you have uh, indirect test, uh, in, within that composition we will try to identify those mistakes, that is what indirect test. And discrete point versus integrative testing. Discrete only one item, grammar or vocabulary. So here I want you to understand students, uh, that is when you talk about discrete point, it is going to be focused on only one language item like grammar or vocabulary, but you cannot focus on too many things uh, when you have discrete point. But when you talk about uh, integrative testing, uh, like it focuses on all the language items uh, like a writing composition. In writing composition, we would be checking all the grammar, vocabulary and even other language items. So this is the major difference which we have uh, between a discrete point and integrative testing. So when you talk about discrete, it means that it would be focusing only one language item. But whereas integrative, the name itself suggests that like it focuses many language items. Norm referenced versus criterion referenced testing. This is also one of the important approaches to testing like which we have in language teaching. Norm referenced, it means that a student's performance, whereas criterion referenced to classify according to student's performance. This is the major difference between norm referenced and criterion referenced. When you talk about norm referenced, it talks about student's performance, but whereas criterion referenced, it talks about to classify according to student's performance. What is the objective versus subjective testing? And even these are also some of the interesting approaches which we could use for testing, they are 
objective and even a subjective. I hope you understood by looking at this objective and subjective. When you talk about objective, it means that like you will be having many options. Maybe we can also call it as multiple choice testing. And we can also, like when you talk about uh, subjective testing, like we can also call it as a descriptive testing. Means you need to write a lot. But whereas in objective, you need to identify which is the suitable word for that particular uh, blank or a question. And we also have another important latest testing that is computer adaptive testing. This is one of the popular testings which we have in English language teaching because it is also reliable and it is also valid. And this is also one of the popular testings or one of the popular approaches which we have uh, in language teaching. I hope uh, you are aware of some of the techniques in testing, but there are many things which I want you to understand like when you talk about uh, techniques of testing. The first and foremost technique of testing is multiple choice items. As I already told you that when you talk about multiple choice items, uh, here you will be having choices out of four choices you need to identify which is the suitable or right answer. Apart from multiple choice items, we also have even other techniques which we can use in testing. Yes or no questions and true or false items. And here you don't need to like write a descriptive. By looking at this item itself, you could easily understand that like it is like you need to say yes or no. Suppose if I ask you, do you go for a walk? Maybe you could say that. Yes, I do go for a walk or no, I don't go for a walk. Maybe that's up to you. So it means that it is expecting just yes or no. Similarly, true or false. If it is right and you say that true and if it is false, you usually say false. And other important techniques which we have in testing that is gap filling items. This is also one of the popular techniques which we always use in, in order to uh, test somebody's knowledge, gap filling items. Like this is uh, one of the popular activities uh, or one of the popular techniques which we use in testing in most of the competitive exams. Like there will be some gaps and you need to fill all those gaps with appropriate words. And the other important technique which we have in testing is short answer type questions. Here, like you don't need to give a a long and lengthy answer, but you are expected to give a very short answer. And let me talk about the last and important technique of testing, that is essay type questions. I know that you would love to attempt these kind of questions because uh, most of us write uh, long essays. So here you are expected to write long essays for these essay types of questions. Apart from the techniques which I already talked to you, let me talk about uh, some other techniques of testing. As you can see here, testing of vocabulary, testing grammar, testing pronunciation, testing listening, testing speaking, testing reading, and testing writing, and testing content. So students, so far we talked about so many things which are really helpful for testing and evaluation. And it is not only just useful for MA second year or MA first year students, but it is also useful for even B ed and even D ed students. Let me conclude by highlighting the points which I talked about in this session. First, I started talking about need for evaluation and testing. Then we moved on to talking about the definitions of evaluation, measurement and test. And afterwards talking about types of evaluation. Then I try to emphasize qualities of a good test and features of a good test. Then we moved on to approaches to testing. And finally, I concluded by saying techniques of testing. And with the help of this session, I hope even you came to know the difference between or difference among all the terms which I talked about like test, measurement, evaluation.
what are the qualities of a good test and even types of evaluation, the difference between formative and summative evaluation. If you are really interested to know more about uh, this testing and evaluation, you can contact me on 9542978844. And here is my email ID that is Nagendra N A G E N D R E K English at the rate of gmail.com. I'm going to sign off this uh, to this session. Until then, bye bye. Thank you.